quick one. Um, I chose the topic, the creation of reality, for a very simple reason. Um, I do transformation work in companies, um, and I would say I'm a psycho plumber. You know, people have got lots of piping in their head, and sometimes lots of rubbish gets stuck in there, and then believe that rubbish is real, which is not a fact. And so what a plumber does, he comes in there with a plunger and goes until the blockage is freed. Hence, we still don't have slides, do we? No, it's okay. So I can continue with outsides for now, but I chose some funny... Ah, there we go. So I chose this bizarre little picture of a skull with lots of mechanical parts in it because it is not that romantic what goes in our head. Many people make huge assumptions what's going on inside and it's very woo-woo and they see you for a guru and they tell you all kinds of interesting woo-woo things how to change your life. Not necessary. It's quite psychomechanical. Let's start with a simple story. First of all, you need to understand that most people are unconsciously incompetent. That means you don't know that you do not know, and it's called the arrogance of ignorance. That means when you go back to your office and look around your team, you're going to realize that you've got a bunch of people in there, statistically, who've got a strong opinion based on nothing but thin air. But they will fight you. Then, there is conscious incompetence when you realize, oh goodness, I don't know, which is already the door to liberation. At least we can acknowledge that. Next one is unconscious competence. Those are the people who have a natural ability, but they don't know how. Clear so far? So they make a great curry, and you say, how do you do it? And they say, well, oh, that's easy. And you go, well, that's not easy. It's good. Could you explain? Oh, you just take fish and curry and paste it. Ta-da! So they can do it, but they can't explain. And so the mastery is conscious competence. You know exactly why you do what you do. But when it comes to reality, it becomes really contentious. Because your reality is not my reality. What is reality? Well, let's start the little journey. First of all, most people don't even know who they are. It's very bizarre. They say, I know who I am. And you go, really, pussycat? Let's talk about that. And some people realize that there's somebody trapped inside. We're searching, we're looking, we're looking for some new solution, fair enough. And then you buy a book called, Who Moved My Cheese? Who cares? You know, or The Seven Habits of Highly Successful Hamsters. The market is overloaded with how-to books on how to become happier. They are very dangerous. They don't tell you reality. They tell you some pot boiler rubbish, which won't help you, but it's like coffee. It keeps you awake, and once the coffee runs out, you buy another coffee, which sells another book, essentially. Let's do something that works here. First of all, many of you are in an age bracket where I can safely assume you've not seen the movie The Matrix. In the movie The Matrix, the chap, the hero, gets the choice between the red pill and the blue pill. The blue pill is you go back to where you were, and the red pill is you find out how things really work. In this room, no choice, we're gonna take the red pill. Here we go. The hardest thing to do when we wake up to reality is that some of your egos will take a hit. Because we're so smart, we know the truth. That is an egoic delusion, as you guys say, Maya. Let's have a look at what really is going on. First of all, it all starts the moment you're born. The moment anything is born, including this wonderful little duckling, something called imprinting happens. What does that mean? The gentleman with a genteel white beard is Konrad Lorenz, a fellow Austrian citizen who became the Nobel Prize winner for a new science then called ethology, the science of behavior. And so what he did is he took a goose, a bunch of wild geese, the eggs, hmm? and then, you know, he put them in a nice warm box and bred them and boop, the eggs open up, out comes a goose. And it looks at this man with a white beard, and he does not look like a goose, obviously. Otherwise, go and have your eyes out, check. And the point is that we are predisposed to something called imprint. The first thing we see becomes daddy or mommy, and he discovered that. So the first thing, the most dangerous thing is, you were just born, and the first person you looked at might have imprinted you. We can imprint ducks to believe their chickens has been done, ducks believe their dogs, and not only ducks, chickens who believe their God knows what else. So the funny thing is we live under the illusion that we are absolutely the captains of knowledge, of decision-making powers, when 
just by the moment you were born, you were already imprinted by the first thing you see. It's a very deep process. What's the problem? Most people, again, live in the delusion they know who they are. So let's be very interesting here. I'm going to make a test. How many of the women in the room are virgins? How many are not? <gasps> How could you do that? We're in Sri Lanka. We don't do that here. You realize that? Every culture that you go to will play the culture game. They go, Roger is a white man. He comes from Austria and they're all weird. <laughs> yeah, that doesn't understand. So one of my favorite questions when you have a session with management, right? And we're supposed to be modern, open people. And you point at the first woman and you just look at her and say, how old are you? And she's like, oh, I'm a lady. And you say, I didn't ask you if you're a virgin. Oh my God. What program is running her? It's all subconscious rubbish. Because if you ask a man, how old are you? Men get better with age. Have you heard that? Like red wine. No, we grow fat, stupid, and get diabetes. So the fact is that we have a belief system, we're going to talk about that, which was like, men are always okay. But when you talk to a lady, like she's like, who, me? And you say, like, how old are you? It's like, I'm a lady. Well, but if she's 18, she can talk about it, true? How old are you? I'm 18. 20? Can. 25? Sure. 30? Mm, 35? I'm a lady. <laughs> totally stupid. Totally insane. And we'll talk about that a little bit later. What the hell is going on? We have so much garbage in our brain, subconsciously. Clear so far? It's all pre-programmed. You think you've got free will? Ha ha. Let's talk about this. This is Pavlov's dog, so I'm not calling any of you a quadruped here. But that's what Pavlov did. It was called stimulus response. Fair enough. So ring the bell, food. Ring the bell, food, right? Ring the bell, and dogs are like... <laughs> Salivation food. Guess what happens to most of you? End of month paycheck! Friday, TGIF. It doesn't mean toes go in first. It's thanks God, it's Friday. And then the boys go and take their paycheck and go, I'm shouting drinks for everybody because it's Friday. Yeah, baby. And then Monday comes. And what color is Monday? Blue. It's all jigged up it's so automatic wake up and smell the flowers what life are you leading clear so the interesting thing we have built in stimulus response all over the place and when you touch those buttons we go don't go there why no we can't go why that's where Sri Lanka and then you go to Singapore don't go there you can do it in Sri Lanka that's where Singaporeans it's crazy and even within Sri Lanka or Malaysia or when the countries are big, they go, you can do that in northern Sri Lanka, not in southern Sri Lanka. In Malaysia, I tell you, they go city by city. You can do this in Ipoh, but you can't do it there in Kuantan. Why? Because we're from Kuantan. We're not from Ipoh. That's how crazy it is. So the fact is that the slides are dead. Whoops. Uh oh, ovation. Ah, okay. So very important. What's happening is this, how do we create reality? Let's be very unromantic. We are physio-psychobiological mechanic machineries, a bio-machine. And first of all, to create any sense of reality, we need input information, right? You've got five interfaces. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, right? All that, that's all you got. And that is where information is coming in. Otherwise, you don't exist. Somehow, the interesting thing is this, that our CPU, our computers are pretty lousy. We get two million bits per second. Every second, tak, 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 is coming in. Agreed? Science, sound, everything. But the brain cannot process all that into a conscious decision-making information. So out of two million, only 40,000 bits per second gets turned into actionable information. Which means, who is making the decision in here, what stays and what goes? Is that clear? Most of the information we receive goes into the garbage. Clear? And then we retain a small amount and go, that's reality. So we better check out what's the filter. So I want to invite you to, to get to know the RAS, the Reticulate Activating 
system, RAS, write it down. And it's very, very simple. The brain does the following thing. From the world, it gets sight, sound, da, 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 da. It goes into the part called the RAS, and the RAS goes, yes, 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 no, 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 yes, 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 no, 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 no. What does it make these decisions on, yes or no? It's very simple. Our value system, yeah? belief system, cultural background, past experiences. So the interesting thing is, my father was an engineer. He had three engineering degrees and one PhD. Huh? And guess what his best idea for his son was to study? Engineering. I'm the worst engineer on the planet. I've got a master's degree to please the old man, and as soon as I got that degree, I've never used it again. Clear so far? Am I upset with my father? No. But the rules of engagement that work for parents may not work for children. Clear so far? Next thing, Sri Lanka is just starting to blossom. It's an incredible moment. It's true. You guys are just opening up. And we've got a very polite society here. So many of you will go through a lot of heartache because your children are using something called, it's a secret, the internet. And on the internet, they can find things that you might find strange, weird, offensive. No way, Jose. And they will say, we don't do that. Whether it's right or wrong, what they're finding, irrelevant. We're set for a massive generation stretch in this country. It's going to come. Is that clear so far? Interesting or not? Because the filters that they will apply are not the ones you grew up with. Who's right, who's wrong? Irrelevant conversation. Totally not relevant. Clear? We have certain preferences because the computer was programmed that way. So every single time you talk to somebody and you have an impression of somebody, be careful and check your own computer filter. So right now, belief systems, let's talk about it. Why can't you ask a woman for her age? It's actually an anti-woman belief system because a woman's value was only as good as her capacity to have children. Da, na, na, na. Because when you pass 35, you became an old spinster. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Some of you are like, oh, that's kind of true. That's it. So it's just marketability, man. And it's a quite anti-feminine reason. So girls, from now on, you're 45, you're 65, loud and proud. Liberate yourself. Is that clear so far? Go for it. Bang. So the thing is this. Most people think they're operating consciously. That's a complete delusion. Most of the stuff is already taken care of by the RAS, reticulated activating system. Example, you go to, to, to companies and you have been educated, as I have been, to become very respectful towards people who are a bit older than you are. There's nothing wrong with doing it in a social environment. But in a company environment, let me give you a heads up. The amount of technical data is doubling every 72 hours globally. Hmm? Most of the bosses you report to are very nice people. They can find the front door to the office. Yeah? They can find the elevator and the air-conditioned chair. If you start asking them about modern technology, societal change, speed of innovation, they're out for lunch mentally. But you're supposed to say, yes, sir, of course, sir. Mm -hmm. Boss is always right. How about boss is a very nice man who's totally wrong sometimes? And if we have educated each other to accept things that are not true or not correct or not up to date, are we serving them man? No, we're not. These are all the challenges coming our way right now. Interesting. So you will see that some of the children in the next generation will not listen to you. They might leave the country. They are leaving the country partially. True or false? And at the same time, we do have a mindset here that Jeevan, and there's no mistake here, we didn't talk about this before the session, as a matter of fact. He comes up here and I go, yes, serendipity works. He talked about uh, C Siguria, right? Siguria, a fantastic, astounding feat of human ingenuity that took mm, willpower, is that clear? That took, we're not going to settle for less. Well, nowadays we walk around and I've been in Sri Lanka for five times or six times and eventually when things are not quite so okay, they go, ah, well, we're Sri Lankans, which is kind of nice. 
But then you go to the restaurant, the table wobbles. Ah, it's okay. Clear? So the truth is this, from now on, be less forgiving with yourselves. Clear or not clear? Hello? Be less forgiving. Ask for more. Clear? And so that is the first step, because we have gone in reverse from Sigiriya to end up at a point of, you know, polite floating down the river. The point is, the world is changing so fast, the waterfall's coming. Wake up and smell the flowers. So the thing is this, and realities create self, self-feeding loops. I think you know the guy with winning, that is Charlie Sheen, right? When Cuckoo, the actor, is like, winning! Okay, the older generations have lost. Who is Charlie Sheen? Charlie Sheen is an actor who had a real big drug problem, maybe still has one, and he had wired in his mind that he was always winning at everything, which is completely delusional. And the other guy decides to be a loser. So you will see people in your surroundings that decide to be losers, and the other ones are delusional, and they think they've always got intelligent things to say. Have you realized that? Be very careful. Don't buy it. And then beliefs you put on certain goggles. You never check anymore. Like, for example, this is one of the favorite beliefs of some young ladies. One day, someday my knight in shining armor will come. And then they wake up at 35 and he's here. <laughs> this is when you guys live life by just living it, but not making conscious decision. Okay? And in America, they say, shh, happens, fill in the blanks. No, it didn't, shh, didn't happen, you happened. You gotta consciously, constantly check out where you are. Are. What am I thinking about? Who am I hanging out with? Who am I allowing to co-create my reality? Clear? You guys excited or depressed so far? Good. So the thing is this, beliefs, and this is the hardest part, they will fight for the survival, okay? They're an error program in your computer, that's all it is. So the funny thing is when you see couples, right? I love couple counseling, it's better than tennis. Yeah. Bing, bong, bing, bong. They're always beating each other up. Based on three simple, simple things. Generalization, deletion, distortion. Once you understand these things, discussions won't scare you anymore because you can predict what's going to happen when you're talking to a faulty program. Agreed? Let's see. You have this couple, girl, boy, man, woman, you know, and they've been married forever, you know, and then they go to the counselor, you know. Generalization. He never listens to me anymore. Never. Okay. He never cares for me anymore. Never. Okay, so for argument's sake, the guy just took a picture last week where he bought her flowers. Fair enough. Yeah.